Hey everyone, it's Alex with Crywolf Code, and in this video, let's look at how we can use Azure static websites to host a static Blazor app. This process is much easier than most people might think it is, and you can actually have your Blazor app running out on the web in just a few minutes. So let's jump in and see how to do this. Now, obviously you will need an Azure account for this video, and I'm not gonna show the whole signup process here because I'm assuming you can figure that out yourself. But once you're logged in, you'll just wanna go to your storage accounts like I have here, and then let's click create. And let's just create a new account for this. And I'll call this something like static blaze or something relevant to what we're doing. And then go ahead and validate that. And Azure says we're good to create this. So go ahead and do that. And this will take a few moments. So let's jump over to Visual Studio Code and look at the other half of this. So VS Code is obviously a really popular uh, editor. And from here, we have all kinds of tools to actually create and deploy an app straight to Azure. Visual Studio Code has all kinds of awesome extensions, as you might be aware, and there's two of them that we'll need for this process. And the first one is just the Azure account extension. So go ahead and install this. And this handles all kinds of account management and other tasks for us that work across many extensions. So if you're doing anything with Azure, you'll basically always want to have this installed. And once that's set up, we can hit Control Shift P and this extension gives us some useful commands we can run such as Azure sign in. So I'll click that. And that will launch us out to the browser where we're already logged into Azure. And it gives us sort of this nice SSO. Then we can close out of that tab. And now back in VS Code, we're authenticated to Azure. Now the other extension that we'll need is Azure Storage. And I wanna mention that there's actually multiple ways to deploy an app to Azure static websites from VS Code. There's also extensions that can manage static websites directly and things like that, but I actually find the storage extension is the easiest way to do this. So I'm just gonna click and install that. And now we have this extension installed and we're ready to actually create an app and deploy it out there. Right now we don't have an app, so let's create something to work with here. So I'll open up a terminal here and you can actually very quickly create a new Blazor app just from the command line. And an easy way to do that is to say .NET new, and we want a Blazor WASM app. This stands for Blazor WebAssembly. And we really wanna go with the Blazor WebAssembly hosting model with this and not Blazor server. Uh, WebAssembly is gonna work much better for us with static hosting, and you will not be able to do Blazor server with this process. Uh, you'll need to use a full web app in Azure to be able to do that. But we can give this a name that's relevant to what we're doing. So I'll just call this uh, static. Blazor app or something like that. And I had a zero there instead of an O. So after Visual Studio creates that for us, uh, let's navigate down into that app. And one real quick tip here is that if you type code dash R and then a period, you can actually reload the current window to that app that we just created. And now over on the left, we have our whole directory over here with our Blazor app and we're ready to go. Now this app is using a starter template that .NET provides for us. So it actually is a full app with sort of a landing page and a couple basic things. So we don't actually have to code anything. That's really not our focus here. We wanna deploy this straight out to Azure and then we can look at the app there. Now, in order to do that, one step we have to complete first is to publish the app. So back in our command line, we can say .NET publish and this will put together a sort of package or directory for us that we can actually deploy out to the static storage website. And this might take a moment depending on how fast your computer is, but it does run pretty fast as we can see. So after that completes, now under our bin directory, we have this publish folder. And the publish folder contains a www root. And this is really, this is the deployable version of our Blazor app. So we want to take everything in this root folder and deploy that out to sta Azure Static Web Apps. Now, because we installed those nice extensions earlier, now when we right click on this, we get this useful link that says, deploy to static website via Azure Storage. And this is really nice for us. This eliminates a lot of manual work. So if we click on this, it'll ask us which subscription we'd wanna pick. So I'll just choose the one that I'm commonly using here. And let's choose the Static Blaze one and you'll see we actually get this error message. And that's because we forgot to do one step out in Azure. So let's, let's take a look at what happened over here. So our deployment was complete. And remember, we were waiting for this to finish. And now when we go to our storage account here, everything is fine, except we have to enable this one setting under static website. 
Right now that's disabled, so just go ahead and click Enabled. And we'll also want to specify an index.html document name as our root. Blazor apps use index.html as their root, and so this tells the Azure Static Web App which file to serve up by default when people request our site by the URL that it gives us. We'll look at that more in a second, but we can verify that over here back in VS Code as well in a second. Now, obviously you could also hit this button to just enable static storage right from the IDE here, but I wanted to show you how to do that out in Azure just to sort of show you that link between the two or what's actually happening here. And then here it's just asking us that same information again. Um, so I'm just going to skip our error again um, or just put in, you know, whatever default you want there just to make it happy. And you see now it'll actually say that it's deploying out to Azure for us. And this will just take a moment to upload all of our files here out to Azure. And then when that completes, we'll be able to see what happened. So you can see that did complete. And now when we click browse to website, you'll see that we get our nice web application and everything is working as expected. So we have a few basic interactive elements to our starter app here and everything looks fine. Now, when your app first loads, you might notice things don't look right or you get like a weird 404 message or some assets are missing. Just give it a second. Sometimes it takes a minute to sync. And then if you keep hitting control F5, um, eventually the full site will pop in. I've seen this happen a little bit when you're first deploying, but it should come through fine for you. Now we actually have a basic deployment pipeline set up here. So we could potentially make additional changes to our app. So I could change this to say, you know, hello universe or something like that. And then all you would have to do is run uh, your .NET publish again. And once that completes, you'll just go through that same process again of deploying out. So if we go into our bin directory and we can say deploy to static websites again and just choose our app and it's actually going to ask us if we want to overwrite what's already in there. So I'll just say delete and deploy and it will go through that same process again of uploading all that. So I'll just give that a moment to finish. And so once that's done, our page will load and we have our updated header, and you can see how you could continue to push out changes this way. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how easy it is to deploy apps out to Azure and how nice and flexible the Blazor WebAssembly hosting model is. I encourage you to experiment with this process a bit yourself since it's a lot more rewarding to see your site out on the real web. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and there will be more content to come soon.